Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video I'm going to show you how to effectively use uh, the new feature of Roblox which is attributes, which is kind of like uh, public variables for your instances or custom properties kind of thing. It's like um, public variables in Unity and stuff like that. So let's go in. So I'll go to base plate and I'll show you a way uh, to effectively use those properties uh, without any problem. All right. Okay, so let's say I have a part just for testing. Okay, so I have this part. All right, cool. Now I want to add some attributes to it. For example, hello, and okay. It's values world, for example, let's say um, something like pi, um, a number, save, and let's give it 3.14, and stuff like, oh god, <laughs> 3.14, okay, alright, here we go. Okay, so we have these two properties, cool. Now let's get a script, so we have a script inside it, a server script. Let's zoom in and all right so first of all I'll make a or actually let's say I want to use an attribute from there for example I want to use the pi attribute okay so here's how I should do it I should do script dot parent get attribute just like this and then I need to give it pi or hello or whatever so in this case pi Let's run and let's see the output. And here we go, it works. However, let's say this thing is being run like a lot of times. Okay. So it's being run a lot of time right now, as you see. And that's cool. However, Every time uh, in the loop, what you're doing is you're telling the engine to give you an attribute with pi. And pi or that attribute doesn't change. So you're basically just making calls to the engine and necessary calls instead of actually um, caching whatever uh, results you got. So here is the right way to do And also you really need this whole line to access the pi attribute, which is not something that you want. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to make some uh, table. Let's call it, for example, g. And it will be just like this. All right, cool. Now we have an empty table. One, now, what we should do with this? All right, so I'll do for i, for attribute, comma value in pairs, um, part, or script.parent get attributes okay here we go do all right so we're going to look through all the attributes inside here and we're going to put them inside this table called g all right let's do it so g with the index of the name of the attribute which is this one this is the name of the attribute, is equal to the value of the attribute. All right, cool. Now it should be fine. Now if we do print g point hello, for example, and print g point uh, pi, that's it's happening. All right, it works just fine. And I can use it, use this stuff however I want, and I'm not calling any uh, studio kind of, callbacks or whatever I'm just using a cached values from the attributes all right and oh god oh no no I forgot about the ways got there <laughs> oh man oh man okay we're stuck oh well it's happening come on okay bet exhausted cool Thank God. All right. <laughs> okay, so this works right now, as you see. This works pretty fine. However, 
However, let's just do wait for here, right? Now, the problem with this is that if we go to the part, right, and we change a value, for example, hello, instead of world, we want yo, for example. Well, it didn't change. So, how we can fix that? Well, very simply, using an event. So, we'll do script.parent dot attribute change connect to a function called attribute change and we'll make the, that function that will be called when an attribute get changed so when an attribute get changed the uh, the engine or Roblox studio will notify us by calling this function called attribute changed and it will tell us which property got changed so it will pass the name of the attribute okay cool now what I'm going to do is just I'm going to update my cached values that are inside this table so G with the name of the attribute of course is equal to um, so I need to right now to get the value the current value so I'm going to to say script.parent uh get attribute and i'm going to pass the name of the attribute and here we go uh we're done so now if we run this though and let's go to part let's change it to something else and here we go it got changed and that's just so awesome now you can use it however you want and also you don't need to change any code inside of here to register your attributes you just add a new attribute let's say uh codes otaku for example save um and you can give it a value and now you can just print g dot codes otaku very easily and run and here we go is awesome cool so that's how you use um attributes effectively in your code but now instead of actually uh when we want to add a new part or a new thing to such thing like we don't want to copy and paste all of this so what we can do is we can use a module of course so let's make a module for that a module script and I'll call this let's say public for example okay and I'll call this public public all right cool now what you're going to do is we're going to use meta tables so I'm going to set the meta table of public to public itself and I'm going to say public dot public dot um, call so it's a function function public dot call it's a function and it will gives us the table that got called right which we don't really need it just will be public uh, or the module itself so I'm just going to say it like that all right and then we need a host another uh, variable the host is basically script.parent but we'll see how that goes so we'll create a table local t equal to that and then what we're going to do we're just going to copy this stuff right here just like this and instead of instead of script.parent i'll just call it host or let's say instance that's a much better name actually okay instance so this is called g okay now instead of script.parent it's called instance instance and instance cool now we're just going to return g which is our created 
table. Okay, very awesome. Now here is how we use this in our scripts. So I don't need it this anymore. And instead of local g equal to a table and then do that process, I'm basically going to require this module and call it like a function. So here's what I'm going to do. So of course I need the replicate storage service for first. So local replicated storage is equal to run can get service replicate storage and then I'm just going to say replicate storage. Okay, dot public. And if you want to be safer, then use get wait for children or wait for child. But since we're just in a script, it doesn't really matter in the server. Uh, but if you were in local or the client, maybe it would be better to use, or actually just use it anyways, just to make sure everything is consistent and safe. Okay. Alright, good. Now we're requiring the module, however, we're not calling it. We want to call it. And what we're going to call it with, uh, we're going to call it using script.parent okay so we're basically passing our parts that we want to get the attributes from which is uh, the parent of this script in this case now let's try it up and it should work just the same however part is not a valid member of script part is not a valid oh script.part oh god <laughs> but parent okay run and we should be fine. Yes, we're fine. All right. Now we're basically done with our stuff. And we can even actually make this one liner code, which means uh, this whole code can be in just one line. So we can just copy it around. We can make this variable uh, global, but that's just not a good uh, thing to do. Uh, most of the time because it will cancel some optimizations so some Roblox do optimizations but yeah this is pretty good now you can whenever you want it you can just you know uh, copy it and do whatever you want with it so let's say I want uh, another part let's say all right so this is how it is right now this is how you work with it so you make a new part for example Let's say you have a new attribute, let's say um, Roblox. Okay, and then the value is crazy, for example. And so is crazy <laughs> is a value, right? Now we have a, a, an attribute inside our part. Now we can make a script inside it, for example, let's say. Okay. And what we're going to do, we're just going to copy our code, our one-liner code, just like this. And now, bam, we have uh, access to all the attributes directly without any problem whatsoever. So you can just go ahead, do print g dot uh, Roblox, I guess I called it. Let's see, Roblox here. Dot Roblox. Run. And boom, it's crazy. Roblox is crazy for sure. <laughs> I really love this uh, attributes feature. So I hope you enjoyed it too. And this is the way to go about using it efficiently in your code. And so that was it. By the way, if you want something else other than the script.parent, you can just do it right here. Or if you want, let's say, to get the attributes of another object using another table, you can call like attributes, like workspace attributes, for example. Okay, is equal to, and you're just going to copy this, or actually just make this as a as a variable by itself. Let's say public. Let's call this public. local public is equal to that 
and public script.parent and here you can just say public and then give it the instance uh, that holds the attributes that you want so in this case for example workspace okay now let's add an attribute to workspace let's say um well attributes attributes okay string are awesome Now you can just say g dot attributes and it will give you back the value which is r awesome. Oh, so it's wrong? Okay, well, I don't need to call like g. g is the attributes of script.parent, not the workspace. So I need to use this workspace attributes instead. Okay, and boom are awesome and what I can do too is do for i comma v in pairs workspace attributes do print v or i comma v even and you can you know print all the attributes inside the workspace which is in this case it's just one its name is attributes and its value is are awesome okay all right so that was it for this video i hope you liked it and of course you'll find all the scripts and all the things that you need in the description and so goodbye for now thank you for watching goodbye